so it's me in the garden again and uh, oh look flowers over my head um welcome to season three episode seven of the canary room it's a special edition again today um so we won't be in the shed behind me we um will take in two sheds on this show uh, so first and foremost we'll go and spend some time with steve domini um one half of the yorkie supreme and then later on in the show we'll visit bob pepper um and we'll see some of bob's fantastic quality yorkshire canaries i must just say a huge Huge thank you to Steve Brown and Pauline Sherry for their very, very generous donations to the show. Thanks very much, both of you. Very, very much appreciated. Um, you can, of course, if you're able to, pop a donation up in the uh, on our homepage of the YouTube channel. The episode was filmed prior to the UK going into lockdown. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. We will be back in the Canary Room for episode eight of the show. Show. That's due to air at the end of April, uh, beginning of May. Um, so we're fortnightly on the Canary Rooms. The episodes will come out on a Sunday morning UK time at 9am. Grab yourself a cuppa, enjoy some fantastic Yorkshire Canaries and as always, enjoy the show. It is a beautiful, beautiful spring morning. Um, we are moments away uh, from South End on Sea. Um, we're on our way this morning to Steve Domini, one half of the Canary Supreme Partnership. Um, so very much looking forward to, to going to Steve's room and, and seeing his birds. So signing off now, it's about a 15 minute drive. Um, so I will see you at Steve's. Welcome back to a special, special episode of the Canary Room. We are here with one half of Yorkie Supreme, the maestro himself, Mr. Steve Dominey. Steve, thank you very much for, I was going to say the invitation, but actually I think well, I invited myself. You did, and thanks for that um, introduction there as well. <laughs> Yes, you're here. I am here, I am here. It's been, uh, I was going to say planes, trains and automobiles, but no, there was just automobiles to get here. We are in the beautiful uh, South End on Sea part of the UK, a place I've never been before. Um, and we are in one of the most stunning bird rooms I've ever set foot in. In fact, after the show, I may be relocating just in a corner behind you because it is an incredible setup. So Steve, you are, um, you've kept canaries for, how many years now? It's actually 50 years now. Since he was in the womb, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so 50 a long years. Long while ago. Yeah. Um, I can remember the day I first saw canaries. Me and my dad were out driving out in the countryside, not far from here. And there was always a particular house that had canaries flying in an aviary. And I've happened to mention them to my dad. He kept them previously. And it was a case of, oh, we'll have some of them then. And that's how we started. And they were pet type boarders. Right. And uh, it wasn't too long after that that my dad saw an advert in Cajun Avery Birds that a Yorkshire fancier was selling up. And that's how the Yorkshire started. But at that time, we had pretty much, you know, like a lot of breeders do, but, um, a lot of different types of birds. A little bit like the canary room, a menagerie. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah, whole series exactly. of canaries and you walk in and you think, what yeah, are these? I can't exactly. remember. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant <laughs> stuff. So your, your love of the Yorkshire then has been um, several decades, it's fair to say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when, when I lost my father in the, in the late, um, towards the late 70s, um, I was very dedicated then to taking the birds on further, showing more nationally. And um, the following year, I showed for the first time at the Yorkshire Canary Club show. And, uh, you know, it, it was a, a time where Yorkshire were really strong throughout the United Kingdom and a lot, lot of top fanciers. And it was great to start to know them and get out there on the show bench with them, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, really and, and to keep that sort of... Because um, I know you've got a, a real passion for the Yorkshire Canary. Mm. Um, and you are, you are authoring a book at the moment with, with Bob. 
Yeah. That's right. The, yeah. uh... It's a long time coming. <laughs> um, yeah, t- titled a, a Vision of the Perfect Yorkshire, and it's very much to breeding the golden model. So that is what the book will be all about. Fantastic. Yeah. So have a look at out for that book. Um, and as we as we go round Steve's room today, we'll see. I've already seen some of the Yorkies in here, and uh, and they are stunning, stunning. But Steve doesn't just keep Yorkies. Um, I met Steve um, seven, eight years ago now, uh, and he was introduced to me by a mutual friend because um, Steve had uh, ignited a passion for Fife Canaries. So Steve, t- tell us a little bit about that. How did that start for you? Well, it started by having a few in the bird room for feeders. And I actually got fed up with them in the room and got rid of them. Had a season where lost some Yorkshires from not having the feeders so I thought well I've got to get them back in the room if I'm gonna have them in the room I'll take an interest and I initially thought well I'll have something like half a dozen pairs or whatever it was actually uh, I think four hens proper hens the first year a couple of cock birds but picking the birds up from yourself Matt at the Midland Fife and I was bitten with a fife. It, what a fantastic show, the, the atmosphere, the competitive nature, and it just attracted to me other than the beauty of the bird. Yeah. And uh, that's gone on very strong, as you see in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and you've had, some, you've had some great success on the bench with the fives already. Well, some. Uh, I think mine are to, compared to most, but, you know, some, some encouragements there. Um, but I feel like they're coming along now, and hopefully we can... Uh, improve that a little bit fantastic yeah excellent one of the things that um, has impressed me apart from the immaculate uh, uh, immaculateness of steve's room is um is the space now one of the things that i that i noticed when i came into steve's room was just the 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 amount of space that steve's got in here so steve it's a brick built construction um how big is it (laughs) Um, I believe it's 22 by 8, so right. it's, um, it's not actually ginormous, but it's, um, it works for me. Yeah, and, and fascinating, and, and this is something that I think I'm going to have to invest in at some stage, although I, I might have to work that round Claire in some way or another. Um, you have um, UPVC cages, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, I switched to these, I think it was five years ago now. Um, purely to lower the maintenance of painting consistently. Um, For me, it's been a great move because they're easy to clean. I do disinfect and wash my cages every clean out. Um, And I think, you know, it it hasn't shortened that process in a way, but it saves many hours of painting and hours you can spend looking at your birds. Yeah, yeah. And I think anyone who has a bird room will know that painting cages is pretty much one of the worst jobs that there is. Mine are due this year. The main block needs Mm. painting again. So maybe that will be the time I decide to invest in in UPVC or or plastic cages. I always (laughs) said that keeping birds is much about painting them. Decorating. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is. So, Steve, you've got a um, you've got some top tips for us today. So, your your first one, um, which is uh, I'm fascinated by, because you don't use sawdust in the in your bedroom. No, at all. no, I, I, I suffer a bit with my chest, and uh, again, when I brought the UPVC cages into the room, I decided to try something different, and I used corrugated cardboard. Um, okay, you're going to get the nice pine smell. But you can do that when you wash your floor or whatever. <laughs> um, but for me, it works. Um, in the breeding season, I actually keep the cardboard there on top of the wire uh, suspended floor. And when you've got birds feeding, it's just a case of rolling the cardboard up, putting it in the bin and putting a new piece in yeah. in seconds. Yeah. Um, but I also do, uh, out, do use the suspended wire floor out of breeding season, yeah. which I find is very good for the birds. And there's no no damage to tails or anything no, else I like that? I find nothing at all. No, no, nothing different to what you'd have normally. Yeah, that's, yeah, how yeah, I, yeah. that's how I see it. The birds immediately adapted to it. They were fine. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it works. 
I mean, I think one of the things that I, you guys, you can't see this at home, but um, one of the things I'll testify is when you walk in here, the the cleanness of the air. So there isn't that um, there isn't that sort of you know you often walk into into rooms that you can you can feel the heaviness of the sawdust, um, and it's absolutely nothing like that. I am moving in, by the way. Steve doesn't know that yet. <laughs> I haven't mentioned that to Hazel, but I'm sure she'll be fine. Um, I'm down. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm sure she, she wouldn't mind. Would oh, she, God, Steve? I'm sure she wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Canary Room is relocating to South End on Sea, um, but the cages are um, the cages are fantastic so we'll, we'll have a little look at those and Steve you also um, you use um, top hat drinkers yeah. for your birds always have done never really felt the need to change um, I, I wash them you know wipe them out daily wash them weekly and to me it works Simple, yeah. simple as that. And do you find, with particularly the fights, do you find that that helps them find the drinker on the show bench? Yeah, sure, it's part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I've never had a problem in that direction. Um, I mean, obviously, you train your birds when, when they're young for that, and but of course that must help yeah. because the bird is used to that way of drinking. I mean, one of the things this is this is a real stockman's setup. Um, what we'll see a little bit later on is that Steve has, uh, you know, ju judging staging um, in the room, which is, um, you know, which is incredible. So, so what was the thought process behind that, Steve? Behind the judging? Yeah, thing. yeah. Well, you create a bird room, you build a bird room. For me, the most important part of that bird room is a judging bench. Um, and the, the fold-out one that I installed worked for quite a while. Once the fifes were in the room, I needed a little bit more storage for training and um, I added the extra unit for that. Yeah. But to me, it's one of the most vital parts of your bird room in whatever form you choose to build it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Again, as I'm as I'm here, and my my mind is building, and I'm thinking, how could I do one? I'd have to probably suspend it from the ceiling in the canary yeah, room. But yeah. maybe there's an exactly, idea. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, one of my friends did that, and it worked for him. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever suits. Excellent stuff. So, so Steve, another one of your your top tips. You were talking about how you um, what you recommend for for novices in terms of the sort of selection, what to what to keep and what to retain. Do you want to? Uh, explain that in a little bit more detail yeah, certainly well first of all i look at if you if you're keeping quite a few pairs of birds to breed with you do need to know your priority pairs the birds you really need to get your youngsters from yeah and i would suggest that you simply look at the birds that you're breeding with consider you might breed a large number of birds and consider which of your adult birds are very likely to be retained the following year and generally that will tell you what are your best birds and your priority birds, yeah. be it cockbirds or hens. And would you, uh, I know some fancies, and I do it myself, when, when I've identified the priority pairs, you know, I'll make sure that I might float their eggs under, under, yeah. different, under different hens to get more and more out of them Certainly. in season. Certainly, you, you need to take the best advantage you can from those birds yeah. because that will move you on quicker, okay. definitely. So in, in the room here, what would you say are your, um, your best well, let's start with the easy ones, the fifes. <laughs> okay. Well, the fifes are, is um, two particular yellow cockbirds that I really, really like, really rate. And um, between them, they, they've got six hens planned. And um, I, I, the reason that is, is they're the birds that I hope to build around. And the remaining birds, hopefully, are going to give me the hens to put into that family. Uh, they're all related birds. But those two particular cockbirds, to me, are the birds that I hope or expect to get my best youngsters from. Okay. Excellent. So we've we've seen some of Steve's fights, and they are um, you know very very good quality birds, uh, and I'm sure you'll do very well on the bench. Although I hope not too well. <laughs> although actually I don't think we'll. Um, I think you'll be showing at Midland, and I'm judging there this year. Oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah we'll have see. to reconsider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Already the judging was rubbish. <laughs> but. 
Steve, you are perhaps better known, um, uh, in fact, well known across the world for your um, your stunning Yorkshire Canaries, um, and you are one half of uh, the Yorkie Supreme stuff. The other half is Bob Pepper, the legendary Bob yeah. Pepper, who uh, hopefully we're going to call into on the way home today and and uh, and see. So, so tell me, tell me, how did that begin? How did the the friendship begin, and how did the partnership begin with Bob? Well, it goes back to 1986, actually, when um, I I was lucky enough to win Best Bird at the Yorkshire Canary Club. I should should mention the youngest ever um, exhibitor to win that match still. Ten, Steve was at the time. (laughs) Ten. Very, very young. (laughs) And I remember going up in my shorts, you know. know. Uh, (laughs) um, And Bob had Best Novice that day. And I think it was the following Tuesday evening, I get a phone call from Bob just talking birds as he normally does and it literally was from that day that we were friends um it was a few years later that i had the same bloodline as bob as i was breeding different bloodline at the time but later on we we got together with the same bloodline um, and bob certainly helped me with some really good birds one particular year lent me a buff cock bird that i've bred probably the best birds i've ever bred from um and then a few years later, Bob went out of the fancy for a period of three years. And when he came back, he went to Italy to buy some birds, brought them back. I picked him up at Dover and we had a look at them in, in the service station, as you would. And uh, <laughs> I think it was, again, a couple of nights later, Bob just phoned me and his first words when I answered the phone were nothing like, hello, Steve, how are you? It was, I need your yellow cock. Um, I said, well, you, you can certainly borrow it, Bob, um, but I've got six buff ends in line for it. It was, it was definitely the best yellow cock I've ever bred. And he says, well, that's all right, I'll have them. <laughs> said, yeah, no problem, take them as well. A couple of days later, I get a phone call. What about its half-brother, that buff cock? Only one of these Italian yellow hens are ideal for it. Yeah, again, Bob, you, you can have that, you know. Um, there's three hens, I think it was, for that bird. So... That was the conversation. I think my next words were, Bob, take the lot for the year. And we did. We moved him into Bob's room. I concentrated on breeding the fifes that year. And that's really how our true partnership started. We decided that we couldn't judge each other's birds. And with the partnership that we had in breeding them, we formed really tongue-in-cheek Yorkie Supreme. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's where that came from. So a, a, a friendship over three decades in the, in yeah. the making. We, we are very unique in respect to our vision, if you like, on the Yorkshire Canary. Quite incredible. Um, I actually say we're telepathic. If I send Bob a photograph of a bird, I know exactly word to word what he will send. And we, we have a lot of um, breeders on the continent that send us both photographs or videos of birds to comment on. And many come back and say, you both said exactly the same. It's quite uncanny how we both see, see things so similar. And so that must have been sort of part of the um part of the, the, the plan, I guess, in, in co-authoring the book together? Yeah, certainly. Um, it, it, it really is there to help new breeders. We felt for a period of time that some breeders aren't breeding to the Goldie model, and we are very firm on the Goldie model. And we, were, we really wanted to try and educate new breeders through the book, both in England and on the continent. Um, In our visits to Turkey, there are so many enthusiastic breeders who we feel need a little bit of guidance, and we're trying to help them do that. No, excellent. So uh, we'll be looking out for that book, but without further ado, uh, I've seen some of them. Um, They are things of beauty. So, Steve, if we can get a couple of the Yorkies out. um, And and what I'm really interested in, because it's a a completely new variety for me, is... um, is what you're looking for when you're pairing birds together. Yeah, so perhaps certainly. if we can have a little look at that. Certainly. Let's do that now. Well, 
for this particular pair of Yorkshires, um, we consider one of the be better pairings in the room here. Uh, clear buff cockbird and a clear yellow hen over here. Um, got to remember these are not in show condition, they're in breeding condition, as demonstrated. Um, but hopefully can explain why this pairing makes a good pairing for us. Buff cockbird has got a particular tight feather on the on the body, while the hen has a little softer feather. So that alone makes a very good feather match. Both birds have correct position. So we're looking at the Yorkshire to stand on a show cage at five to twenty to one when look when you look at the hands of a cock. And both these birds are very close to that. Um, this particular buff cock bird does have very good um, position. It's a good shaped bird, has a nice shoulder, um, and, and basically the feather lies really nice on the body of the bird. The hen is pretty outstanding for its actual shape and the roundness of the top end on the bird, the shoulder area. So again, makes a good, good pairing. Um, if they are in some sort of show condition, we might see them a little bit better than today. But hopefully it gives an impression on what we're trying to achieve with our parents. This is an unflighted, a young, clear buff cock that we'll be using in the breeding team. And this bird was bred from the clear buff adult cock bird. As you can see, very similar stamp of bird. Nice shoulder on the bird, good position and good length. This bird may come into more use in future years for us in the room. We need to breed hens from him, from his related birds to get the best from him. visit to Steve was almost complete. Uh, we will say a, a, a little goodbye to Steve at the end of the show. Um, we jumped in the car and we headed north uh, up to Milton Keynes to go and see the, the legend that is Bob Pepper. Um, so we arrived at Bob's uh, shed um, mid-afternoon and you know just to spend some time with him was uh, was a fantastic um fantastic for me i've heard a lot about bob over over many many years but i've never met the guy uh, so it was our first meeting and uh, you know a real um a real knowledge uh, when it comes to uh, canary breeding but also the yorkie canary so uh, enjoy a very brief trip to bob's bird room now we will be back uh, in bob's and steve's later on in the year everything being uh, equal so um, enjoy a, a taster for now uh, with more i promise you later on in the year
Okay, we use the word legend all a little bit too uh, too loosely. Too, too much. Too loosely today, but I am in the room of a living canary legend. Uh, a gentleman who will uh, be familiar to many of you um, it is, of course, Mr. Bob Pepper. Bob, it's an absolute honour to, to be here, mate. It's a pleasure to be in your room and to be surrounded by um, so many fantastic quality It's boarders. great to have you here, Matt. It's great to have you here. What you're doing is fantastic for the fancy. Oh, bless you. Keep, keep doing what you do. Oh, God love him. I haven't paid him a penny yet either. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bob, we're going to have a look at... Um, so we've been with Steve this morning um, right. down to down to the sunny south end. As I was driving up here, I thought, where's the bloody weather gone? Yeah, I bet that was lovely. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, it was cracking the flags there. So... Steve, I understand, keeps the buff cocks and the yeah. yellow hens. Yeah. And you have the yellow cocks and the buff hens here. That's what we're going to try this year anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So brilliant. Hopefully it comes off. I'm sure it will, mate. I'm, I'm sure, sure it will. It will. Yeah. So shall we have a look at some of the yeah. birds now? Yeah. These are three of the yellow cocks that we'll try this year. He's over year. This is one of his sons from last year. And this one is a bird we've brought in from a friend of ours, Robbie uh, Herworth. Really nice yellow cock, great shape. They're pulling out of shape a little bit there and they've been trimmed up so you're not going to see them as they can look. But this bird can do us a lot of good. Good position, good head, nicely filled in. He's not showing himself there, but when he does, he looks fantastic. This bird, we've got the, the father and the grandfather of him in the room. We tend to work on a line breeding system where everything is going back to a certain bird. We've got some nice hens lined up to these, all related, of course, uh, from, from different, uh, different hens that we'll be able to pair in and hopefully improve them. Now he's starting to show himself a little bit better. He's uh, starting to show lovely outline and lovely, lovely back on this fella. Nicely rolled up at the top. We plan on uh, running him on at least four hens this year. See what he can produce. It's all or nothing with him, I think, and I think uh, <laughs> He'll give us what we want. He's got so many good points. I don't think I've seen a better yellow cock on the bench this year. Definitely not. Now he's looking the part. Here we got uh, a few of the buff hens. Um, there's this one is over year, as is this one. These are uh, this one's daughter. This one's off uh, a nest mate to uh, a, a green cock that we're keeping. She's nice. All of them good length. They've all been trimmed up, so you're not seeing them at their best, obviously. Um, but what we like is the length, the taper, 
the nice head on most of them. This one, she done well at the shows on a number of occasions. Um, but all in all, we're happy with the buff ends and uh, let's see what we come out with this year. <laughs> Might surprise a few, I think. <laughs> so I couldn't not ask the guy while I was there. So one of the things I said to Bob is, you know, what's your, um, what are the key things for you in putting a, you know, a real successful stud of Yorkshire Canaries together? And this is what Bob had to say. Making the best out of what you have. Capitalise on the good points. Breed, breed to your strengths of your birds. Don't try and change them too quick. One step at a time. Well, we are, I'm gonna pull you into shot a little bit, Bob. Um, we are, it was a flying visit, but we are coming back. Um, Bob, it's been an absolute pleasure. The, the, you have a, some stunning birds. I, I am very rarely lost for words, mate, but great, they are. Great to have you here. You know, you're welcome anytime. No, I, anytime. I really appreciate it. And we will be back. We'll be back. I've just arranged it with Bob. We're going to come back after the breeding season and after the molt, um, and we'll have a little look at how uh, some of those fantastic yellow cocks got on with their buff ends. So uh, thanks a lot, mate. Thanks for all your time today. Uh, really you're welcome. appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks really for coming. It. Diamond. Great, mate. Lovely. Thank you. So as we sign off with Bob, we'll head back through the magic of television to Steve's to uh, to say our goodbyes and you know a huge thank you to uh, from me to to Steve and to Bob for for their time um, and for showing us some fantastic Yorkshire canaries and wish them the very very best of luck with their book. So. It's the end of the show. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have today. Um, Steve, thank you in very, very much indeed for, for being the Canary Room this week. Um, inc That's a pleasure, man. Incredible birds, everyone. Look out for Steve's book, Steve and Bob's book. Um, Steve, any final words on, on canary keeping, on how wonderful the Yorkshire canary is? Oh, it's a thing of beauty. It really is. When you get a high quality bird, it's absolute perfection. It's beautiful. I think that's the same with all type canaries. When you see good quality birds, it really is what it's all about. Enjoying viewing the birds. Fantastic stuff. Okay, until next time, everybody, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, um, and share this. Share this because I I defy you to see Yorkshire's at the quality that we've seen today. Until next time, take care. <laughs>